The National Review's editor-in-chief, Rich Lowry, made a pretty big whoopsie while discussing the issue in Springfield, Ohio. I loved, I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls, and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, uh, migrants taking geese from ponds. Only two calls, and whoopsie. The Republican Party's racist. Wow. That was a hard R. Again, sounded like a certain word. All right. Now, of course, this was on Megyn Kelly's show. And uh, boy, she was uh, completely unfazed. <laughs> okay. It's like, it's like she's heard it a lot before. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but people on X slash Twitter noticed, and they weren't happy about it. Uh, in fact, one user wrote, National Review's Rich Lowry inadvertently letting everyone know what the Republican lies about Haitians in Springfield are really about. Um, another said, does anyone need any more proof that many Republicans are targeting these folks because of their race? Um, another said, I just don't understand how someone slips up like that. There's no excuse for it, because I promise it ain't a slip up unless it's a natural part of your vocabulary. Uh, of course. Now, <laughs> conservatives were like... He didn't say that. He just he just misspoke. You just misheard what you what your lying ears are telling you. In fact, DG Born Free writes, Rich Lowry's is milk toast as they come. Remember, this is a guy who wrote about how we should all love nationalism. Um, he morphed immigrant and migrant because there is a current debate, which is the correct way to designate them. He opted for the PC migrant. Wait, <laughs> no, no. That's a hell of a slip, okay? He did misspeak, though. That's for sure. Now, uh, Andy McCarthy defended him by saying, Ridiculous, Rich Lowry obviously got crossed up between immigrants, short I, and migrants, long I. Started mispronouncing migrants with short I, instantly corrected himself with no embarrassment because it was patently a mispronunciation. Jeez! Now, look, I don't think I've ever heard anybody slip up quite like that, Okay. That That is one hell of a slip up. And I also don't see why this guy would start caring about using the PC term. I thought they hated the PC terms. So I don't, I don't really care. I, I don't really think he cared about this, okay? Um, I'm not buying it. Uh, but he responded saying, yep, that's exactly what happened. I began to mispronounce the word migrants and caught myself halfway through. Now I heard a hard R in there, okay? Might not have completely said it, but he definitely, it, it just seems to me like he was thinking it, okay? Because at the core of their argument is nothing more than a racist trope. Remember, he's talking about those people being imported into our country, dropped on a small town to take it over, to collect the welfare, and eat the pets. That's been the Republican argument here. None of that, of course, is remotely true. No, they, they traveled here of their own free will after going through an application process to get temporary protected status in the first place. They don't get welfare benefits. They work, and they're not eating pets. Now, he did bring up, he talked about the geese, right? So this is a part that um, wasn't in the clip that I showed you, but... Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, well, oh, look, you know, they didn't find the, your cats and dogs are safe. But what about the poor geese? I mean, there's people out there nabbing geese. Um, now, here's the thing. Are geese generally protected by Ohio law? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, and there's also a, a federal law that protects uh, these geese as well. However, according to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Division of Wildlife may issue a lethal permit to allow landowners to destroy nests belonging to geese, conduct roundups, and even shoot them if there are too many. Because if there are too many geese in an area, that's yeah, going to cause some issues, right? Uh, now, these permits are called goose damage permits and can be used between March 11th through August 31st. Now, you can also be allowed to hunt in the fall, provided you're outside of city limits. Uh, and it's permitted to reduce the goose population to feed people 
because you can eat them and further scare other geese away. So yes, you can get a permit to shoot the geese legally and even eat them if they become a nuisance. In fact, in just a few years, they can become a nuisance. A pair of geese can easily become 50 to 100 birds. Their droppings can follow the areas around ponds where they tend to congregate. Uh, and geese can even, you know, uh, lose their fear of human beings and attack adults and children. So, you know, you got to be careful with the goose population, okay? I see no reason that those police calls that this man cited couldn't be an example of somebody having one of those permits. And yet, um, of course, uh, you know, black people, <laughs> right, uh, doing anything while black will immediately catch the attention of white neighbors going, oh, I don't know. Oh, I think I think something shady's going on here. Oh, these people are stealing and eating the geese. We don't know. Um, but now, Lori had written before the interview, by the way, in his own publication about what he was going to say. Uh, and he said, news reports often dismiss as ill-informed or xenophobic the concerns of residents. Well, that's because it generally ends up being true. Um, their complaints about the costs and disorder associated with a wave of immigration are legitimate. And the sense that the town has undergone a large-scale change that no one was consulted about was is very real. So, now, that still sounds bad. That still sounds incredibly racist. I mean, are, oh, how come nobody was consulted uh, after, that a bunch of black people wanted to freely move into the community? No, we should have been consulted first. You should have asked for our permission for you darkies to come into our neighborhood. What? What? I'm sorry. What? No. Uh, are, are only certain people allowed freedom of movement in this country? Because I thought we lived in America, the land of the free. Well, they're legal to be here, and they can move wherever the hell they want. Why do you need to ask the community if black people should be allowed to move in? Like, that is super racist. Not only that, but here's this other thing, right? So they're talking about, oh, I can't believe it. 15 to 20,000 black people just dropped into this community. Oh, what a terrible thing. It's funny because whenever there are large groups of white people that move, suddenly move somewhere or slowly over the years, move to different places. And there are different examples of that. Uh, and going throughout history, in fact, there's a term that's been uh, coined uh, called white flight. You don't see the right wing having a problem with that. In fact, they encourage it. Okay. So white people, for example, moving from the city out to the suburbs where black people couldn't follow easily. So that's the issue here, right? And so I, it doesn't matter as much if Lori actually said that word, right? It's his arguments that really betray his real feelings. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shut down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.